G'day AAMCA, we're here with uh, Doug Maynard, uh, Professor of Sociology at University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, talking about the relationship between uh, conversation analysis, ethnomethodology and science and social science. So, Doug, tell me about the, the way that, that um, ethnomethodology and conversation analysis sort of intersect with um, other, other, other sciences, other disciplines. But, but in terms of um, <coughs> uh, Garfinkel's own idea of re-specification. Well, mm -hmm. first, first let's step out what, what re-specification is um, and how that, how that works with, with um, you know, uh, ethnomethodology, conversation analysis, various projects, and, and maybe how that fits in um, with uh, the other science, the formal anal analytic sciences. Well, I think um, re-specification has to do with um, being able to investigate what the practical basis is for the sciences that uh, we do. So whatever the science may be, a natural science, a social science, re-specifying the science means coming to understand what Garfinkel called um, the ethnomethodological alternates, mm -hmm. the, the very practices whereby it's possible to do the science that uh, a person is doing, or a set of investigators are, are doing. So what might be just particular examples of that from, from say, science or sociology? Well, first, you know, we've, uh, I'm talking now about my collaborators on investigating the survey interview. Mm -hmm. Survey-based social science is uh, probably the predominant mode for social science, at least sociology as a social science at least in the United States. I can't say that's true elsewhere around the world, in Europe and so forth, which I think has probably a larger proportions of different kinds of methodologies. But um, uh, in, in the United States, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that if you were to go look at any of our major journals in social science, uh, a good majority of the journals in one way or the other would be using surveys and uh, survey interview data. And that cuts across theoretical areas, everything from rational choice theory to um, um, network um, analysis to Marxist theory. Um, there's many investigators who are doing empirical investigations in which they use the survey interview. Mm -hmm. And um, so my colleagues, and most especially Nora Kate Schaefer and I, have been studying uh, interaction in the survey interview as well as other aspects of the survey interview that can come under the ethnomethodological gaze, so to speak. What are the practices whereby it's possible to even do um, survey research? So like, the, you know, you, I, I gave a talk this morning which was on, um, we've been doing a lot of work on the so-called introduction to the survey. Um, the um, front end, sometimes called the front end of the survey, which um, is usually a scripted uh, introduction to the survey, asking ultimately for the um, potential respondent's participation. And um, it's a good example of uh, where there's all kinds of tacit practices taken for granted, procedures, mm -hmm. common sense ways of getting through that introduction to hopefully be able to pursue an entire interview and to improve your database for the survey. Um, and those kinds of practices have been of interest to survey researchers themselves. They've tried to figure out how can we do this better. Mm -hmm. They haven't had the tools of the ethnomethodologist or conversation analyst. And so we're doing something that the um, professionals in that area themselves would like to be able to do, but we're doing it in, diff in a different kind of way and we're showing, you know, again, just the tacit practices whereby you solicit participation. We're also interested in all the common sense ways in which when you have a survey instrument, that is the questionnaire itself, mm -hmm. or the set of questions, which, um, you know, it's important for the survey um, methodology crowd to have the, the instrument itself be done in a standardized way. 
but as we know, and certainly as we know as at the methodologist conversation analyst, there's always a host of contingencies whereby the best scripted interview is going to be meeting up with real worldly people, real worldly circumstances, real worldly telephone calls, and they're going to have to be in one way or another, and from you know one moment to the next moment perhaps, um, using their skills as an interactional uh, person to implement the standardized interview. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't, it, it's not something that can be mechanically uh, deployed uh, to get information from respondents. If that were possible, they would probably be doing recorded versions of mm -hmm. these things. But instead it takes um, um, human competence and human skill to be able to to, to be able to implement uh, the survey as a, a scripted set of questions. So when you say, um, you mentioned that the methodological ultimate, um, but you, you were talking about working with them, you, you, but what in, in this sense do we, does that mean sort of a replacement or an addition, or I was just wondering if you could unpack that. Well, it's, neither, it's really neither a replacement nor an addition. Uh, I think uh, an impetus of that the methodology is you're pretty much going to leave the world intact mm -hmm. uh, as it is. And the question is, the world as it is, how is it made to happen? Uh, how is it made to happen in such a way as it has the characteristics that it has? And um, so it's um, the, the idea of the ethnomethodological alternate is just that um, with the, with the, the proper know-how, ethnomethodological know-how, one can um, investigate those parts of um, a, sci a scientific inquiry that are so taken for granted that they're in some senses out of the awareness of the practitioners. And so the issue is, how can you get access to those things that practitioners do in order to carry out their science as a practical activity? And um, you have to be able to, in some senses, alternate away from the regular activities of the science to see what undergirds those uh, regular activities. At least that's how I view the notion of alternate. We talked, uh, so Nora Kate Schaefer and I wrote about um, analytic alternation. So the idea of the ethnomethodological alternate is you've got a, um, some kind of standard way of doing things. Mm. In the survey research enterprise, you're supposed to read questions as they are written on the survey instrument. Mm. But as soon as something happens, whereby as you're reading, uh, you have to stop or you have to answer a respondent's question. The respondent might say, you know, I've got to stop for a minute and go to the bathroom. Or they might ask a question like, I don't get what that means, and or do I have to answer it the way it's stated? Or uh, they'll give an answer that doesn't fit the response categories. Um, there might be a silence on the other end of the phone because they put it down for a minute, but they didn't tell the interviewer. Somebody comes to pack the minibar. Yeah, so many, you know, like, they, like they just did. Um, so now you have to engage some kind of ordinary set of social skills to say things like, oh, that's all right, or, well, we can stop here for a minute and we can restart. Um, I could call you back. You know, there's, you know, just a variety of just ordinary social skills whereby you can get through the interview. So you're, you're alternating away from the this, this standardized or the formal... Um, way of doing things mm -hmm. to engage in other kinds of practices and then you alternate back again when whatever contingency came up gets dealt with, gets handled and now you can go back to the script. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly alternating between um, ordinary social competence and formal analytic ways of doing things, schedules or instructions or um, other, you know, written modes of telling people how to do what they're supposed to do. And that, to me, is what um, ethnomethodological alternates all are, are all about, what, what those other skills are whereby you implement the, um, the, the standardized thing.
Thanks a lot for unpacking that, Doug. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for your time. Okay.